brothers and sisters, we want to welcome you to the St. Minus Catholic Charismatic Community in scenic, beautiful downtown Newark, New Jersey. Praise God. Thank you, God, for the beautiful rain. The show is a blessing from heaven. Amen. Amen. Let's pray to praise the Lord. Let's pray to lift up holy hands and bless the Lord. Ask for His mercy. Ask for forgiveness. Ask for mercy. Find the
The Lord brought out his people with joy. Like newborn infants, you must long for the pure spiritual milk that in him you may grow to salvation. Alleluia. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Praise the Lord. Praise God. It's good to gather together in this manner. I'm delighted to have my brother priest here with us. And uh, of course, you know uh, two already, Father Stephen and Father Peter. But there's another Father Stephen who you may know from the friars. He is a Franciscan friar, the renewal. So welcome, Father Stephen. God bless you. And thank you for helping with confessions last night and this morning and uh, being that blessing to all of us and to me too, because I got to go to confession too. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, you're glad about that. <laughs> All right, so I need it too. I know it. <laughs> Praise God, it is true. Well, brothers and sisters, we have a beautiful way to begin the Mass this morning uh, in the welcoming of one who is coming among us to be baptized. And um, praise God. Amen. Amen. And so we will have a baptism at our Mass today. And so I invite you to... Give your attention to the back of the church where I will proceed uh, to welcome our future newest member of the church. So let us begin by asking, what name have you given to your son? Asaya Jove Landon. Asaya Jove Landon. And what do you ask of God's church? Baptism. You have asked to have your child baptized. In doing so, you are accepting the responsibility of training him in the practice of the faith. It will be your duty to bring him up according to God's commandments, as Christ taught us, by loving God and our neighbor. Do you clearly understand what you are undertaking? I do, yes. Yes. Are you ready, Godparents? Are you ready to help these parents in their Christian duty as parents? Yes. I am. Yes. 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 Messiah Jove, the Christian community welcomes you with great joy. In its name, I claim you for Christ our Savior by the sign of this cross. I now trace the cross on your forehead and invite your parents and godparents to do the same. And as many have heard in the past here, okay. as many here have heard this before from me, that you have authority to bless as parents. God wants to bless through you, so may you trust in that blessing and receive his blessing so that you might restore it.
Let us now proceed with the Gloria as we celebrate this Easter octave on this Divine Mercy Sunday. Of the Paschal Feast 
Kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and richly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was one of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the disciple of the apostles and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord.
From the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You have come to believe because you have seen me. Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Open up our minds and our hearts to this great mystery of your divine mercy. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ, now and forever. 
Praise God. Well, brothers and sisters, Divine Mercy Sunday is a extraordinary celebration. Today is the octave of Easter. And in the Jewish tradition, it's actually the, the culmination, the, the feast, the pinnacle of a feast. So Easter leads up to Divine Mercy Sunday because on this day, the floodgates are opened in a very, very special way. And thank, thank God for Pope John Paul II, who in the year 2000, when Saint Faustina was being canonized a saint, um, he declared this day a feast of the church, a, um, a solemnity, and declared it at Divine Mercy Sunday. It actually was always designated that as that in a in a in a very in a lesser way, but he made it a formal manner. Now, I mentioned Saint Faustina because Saint Faustina, for the many, perhaps most of you already know, is the one that Jesus appeared to, and appeared to in something of this manner, and he asked her to draw a picture of painting of what uh, he looked like so that others might venerate this image and draw closer to him and receive from the fountain of his mercy through that veneration and find great peace in the midst of strife. And it is he who asked for, that this day would be declared Divine Mercy Sunday. And there are many promises that are extended uh, to those who come to him uh, with some very simple um, prerequisites, you might say. Uh, and those promises are extraordinary. But let me just give you a sense of what the Lord asks of us, and then I will go into more of what it's all about, is what he gives. So what does he ask of us to receive uh, on this extraordinary day. Well, he asked first, which is always the case, we renew it every time we begin Mass, that we sincerely repent of our sins. That's always the beginning. If you're having difficulties, if you're struggling in any way whatsoever, always ask the question, Holy Spirit, show me, would you show me where my sins are? because I need to repent in some way so that there's no obstacles to your grace being poured out. It's just normal. If you have a relationship and you mess up, you have to ask forgiveness. The second one is complete trust in Jesus. Now, the bottom of this picture, it simply says, Jesus, I trust in you. It's a very simple prayer. And yet, it has great power. It's like nuclear power. It doesn't have to be big to produce a big blast. And so it is, that little prayer has great impact. And I'll say more about that later. The third requirement is to go to confession, preferably before Sunday, because the priest wouldn't be able to hear your, all your confessions um, on, on a, the Sunday, but it is basically to do what is necessary to be in a state of grace. We recognize in these COVID times where the sacraments weren't as available, that God always meets us where we are. Sometimes we're not able to get to confession as in those who are homebound and or whatever circumstances, sometimes the sacrament is not as readily available we try to make it available as much as possible here because it is, it is just such a, a graced and beautiful sacrament that we need to, and God desires for us. He gives this to us. We heard this in the gospel. Jesus said, he breathed on them, and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. And then he said, those sins you forgive are forgiven them. And so right away, the Lord was thinking of that. He was thinking of us. He was thinking of that sacrament so that we might not be burdened by that which he does not want us to be burdened with. 
and certainly our sins. He, he wants to take those from us. Receive Holy Communion on this feast. Venerate the Divine Mercy image, which is one here. You will be given one later. And simply be merciful to others by our actions and our words. Now, first, to say what Divine Mercy is. Divine Mercy Sunday is. With Divine Mercy first. What is mer Divine Mercy? Well, it's not human mercy because human mercy has a limit to it. Human mercy is basically, it has conditions to it in a certain sense uh, that they, that if, if they're not met according to our limited capacity, then we're not going to give that mercy. But God is pouring out divine mercy continually and he, what he points out, what is needed, is simply what makes us available to it. The mercy is always available. Always. Always, always, always. And it's an extravagant gift. It's an ocean. We cannot plumb the depths of it. It doesn't make sense. It's to, to, the, to the elder son, it was wasteful. How could you forgive him? Remember the story of the prodigal son. You know, that it was wasteful to forgive him so, so easily. And yet, this is, um, this is the reality of divine mercy. It is extravagantly wasteful on us. He doesn't mind that. And the, the gift that is given to us is in this image that is painted here is of his heart being opened and if you can see in the picture if you can zoom in on it it is uh, he is literally peeling away his his outer garment to show his heart his heart that is open and and from his heart there is light coming and from his heart there is white and red and the symbolism is of his the blood and water that's flowing from his heart and that's actually was spoken in the second reading today that blood and water not just uh, water alone or blood alone but blood and water flowed from his heart when did that happen when the soldier pierced his side with a lance when he lie um, after he had died on the cross and it says in the scripture that his his side was pierced and out of his heart flowed blood and water. Now, the blood and water symbolize, the water first symbolizes baptism. In fact, we are blessed to have a baptism today. And we thank God for um, the grace of this opportunity for God's little one. And we rejoice with his family. And so that grace of baptism is what opens the door for all of us to receive, to be part of God's family, to know forgiveness, to know what it is to, to be able to come to the Father freely, without hindrance. Um, and and the, the red represents his blood, his blood that was shed for us, his blood that was poured out, the very last drop of his blood was shed for us, out of mercy for us. Now, if you remember the gospel reading from last week on Sunday, remember it was Mary Magdalene who came to the tomb and, and she found the tomb empty and the Lord greeted her, and the risen Lord greeted her. And if you know about Mary Magdalene, there were seven demons cast out of her. And how do you get seven demons? Well, two things, for sure. One, a lot of offenses were committed against her, and she herself committed many offenses. And so when, when Mary was, mother, not Mother Mary, but Mary Magdalene was there at the tomb, she, remember, was also there at the cross. She stayed with Mother Mary and the beloved disciple John. And why was it that she was so able 
to stay when, when all the rest of the apostles fled, except for John, who was staying because he was staying with Mary. Um, why was it? Well, certainly she was staying with Mary too, but it was because the mercy of God had so pierced her heart, so healed her, healed her of all the offenses committed against her, and healed her of all of her own offenses, the many sins, whatever they were, that she had committed. And, and the Lord had so blessed her that she wasn't going to go anywhere else. She was going to stay with Jesus no matter what. And so she was with him at the cross. But she was also there at the empty tomb on Resurrection Day, on Easter Sunday, because of the same reason because the one who has forgiven much loves much and she was forgiven much and she loved much and and the message of divine mercy is God's incredible forgiveness his incredible forgiveness and it's not a forgiveness that is measured out it's not morseled out we measure out forgiveness we say well is this person deserving it or are they not deserving it but that's not the way God has poured out his mercy. He has extravagantly given that mercy to us. That's why we're here. We're here in some way because mercy has touched us. I hope that's the reason why we're here. Now, if that's not why we're here, if there's some other reason, then God wants it to become that we have been touched by mercy. He wants us to experience his mercy in that profound way that we would be like Mary Magdalene and all the saints before us who said, like Peter, Lord, to whom else shall we go? Lord, you are everything. There's no one else. We've tried other places to satisfy our longing in life, but they have not satisfied us. You alone, Lord. And that is God's desire for us, that we would experience his mercy in that profound personal way that changes everything, everything. Now, what about this feast of mercy? First of all, what's the promise in this feast? Well, it's a pretty outrageous promise. If you know anything about plenary indulgences, they're a special gift given through doing certain things and doing a penance and certain prayers, but they are, a, they are uh, helping us to deal with what's called the temporal punishment due to sin, to remove that. Now, that's something like when you, um, if you were to say, uh, let's say you stole something and you went to confession, um, well, no, I won't go there, it'll be a, a, a detour. Let's just say that it's a debt that has to be paid. It's a debt that everyone has to pay, the debt of their own participation in the debt of our sins. Somehow, even though God has paid fundamentally that debt through Jesus Christ, we all have a participation in, in that. And that's why there's this reality of purgatory, because most of us leave this earth with unfinished business. That's the reality of, of each of our lives. But through baptism, especially the grace of baptism in that moment of baptism, there is such a cleansing that we have a washing like what will happen to this new baby who will be baptized. There will be a cleansing, a renewal of that, that happened, excuse me, that baptism brought a cleansing to us that was extraordinary in a way that God said, you are mine, you are mine and I give everything that is mine to you. But the reality is as we go through life, we kind of squander those gifts like, like the prodigal son. We don't quite use them the way God wants us to. And so we need to begin again. And, and we do that in the sacrament of reconciliation in a very special way. But on this feast, there is something totally extraordinary given. It's even greater than the Sacrament of Reconciliation alone. Even though the Sacrament of Reconciliation brings forgiveness of our sins, 
But if I go to confession, as I went to confession yesterday, it doesn't mean that I go directly to heaven after go to confession. Because there's still this reality, this residual reality that I have to deal with. We know that. Something of that happens in, and is shown in our lives where we confess something and we're really sorry, but then we struggle with it again. Well, that reality is um, manifested in, in the time after we pass that we have to go to purgatory because we incompletely respond to grace. But through, the, through this divine mercy feast, receiving the Lord and the Eucharist on this feast with repentance for our sins, receiving him in a state of grace, receiving him in a, ready, in a way that we're ready to receive him, having confessed our sins, and um, placing our trust in Jesus, and, and simply venerating his image of divine mercy, as I said, we will give you during the offertory. And finally, through a commitment to be merciful to others, both in our words and our deeds, that God gives a gift as if we were rebaptized. Now, you can't be rebaptized, but this is as if we were rebaptized on this feast day, on this day to receive Holy Communion, having gone to confession, having put our trust in Jesus. And again, we do that every moment. We have, to, we have to renew that every day, especially in these times we get so anxious and there's so much anxiety. And the Lord says, trust me, trust me. Place your trust in me. Don't be anxious. And so what happens is we have to make that proclamation again and again because we get overwhelmed. We get overwhelmed by the circumstances of our lives, the things that are fearful in our lives. We get overwhelmed and we have to say, no, I will not give in to that fear. I place my trust in you, Jesus. I place my trust in you. I will not give in. I will not surrender to that fear. I surrender to your mercy. And I draw deeply from your mercy. And so as we, as we celebrate this feast, the Lord says to us um, in, in the words, he, I just read some of what he said to St. Faustina. I desire that this feast of mercy be a refuge and a shelter for all souls, and especially for poor sinners. On that day, the very depths of my mercy, that day is Divine Mercy Sunday, the depths of my mercy are open. I pour out a whole ocean of my graces upon souls who approach the font of my mercy. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall, abstain, shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and the punishment due to sin. On that day, all the divine floodgates are opened up to them. He goes on to say, let no soul fear to draw near to me. Even though its sins be as scarlet, my mercy is so great that no, that no mind be of a man or an angel will be able to fathom it throughout all eternity. He goes on to say that everything that exists flows from his mercy. Everything that he created flows from his mercy, his mercy for us. And so, brothers and sisters, in just a few moments, we will celebrate this baptism. And I pray that as we rejoice in the new life given to this little, little child who's going to become, he will become a son of God, that we might allow ourselves to be splashed by this mercy. In fact, um, I'm going to ask two of the priests to go uh, through the church afterwards and to uh, sprinkle all of you with uh, the holy water that we blessed in this baptism, uh, that you might draw deeply from this fountain of mercy, that no one would ever think that they are left out for any reason whatsoever. And that's even true 
when the circumstances don't allow you to receive Holy Communion, God says, but come to me as you can, because I will pour out mercy upon you to help you to prepare to receive me. Just come to me. As he said simply, place your trust in me. Place your trust in me. If you place your trust in me, don't worry. I will take care of everything else. There's nothing that I cannot handle. There's nothing that my mercy will not overcome. So do not be afraid. And so brothers and sisters, our response in the intercessions, which we will say now, and I invite the leader of the intercessions to come forward, the person who's leading those intercessions. And the response will be, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. So please stand. Ask the altar service to bring the um, aspergilliums for sprinkling to bring two of those to me right now. Lord God, we bring these petitions before you. We pray with confidence as we place our trust in Jesus. For our Holy Father, all bishops, priests, and religious on this Divine Mercy Sunday, Lord, impart to them your power and light that they may place their complete trust in you and be able to guide others in the way of salvation. We pray to the Lord, Jesus, Jesus I trust in you. For leaders in government, help them to recognize the limits of their authority and exercise it with humility, wisdom, and courage. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Christ. For those burdened by sin, that they will discover in you, O merciful Lord, the one who is completely worthy of their trust. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. For all those who faithfully follow you, Lord, in the midst of great sufferings, that you may give them your consolation and peace. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, I trust in you. For all those who do not know you and do not believe in you, O Lord, they too have been created to share in your life. Give them the light of faith and gather around them those who will lead them in your ways. We pray to the Lord, Jesus, I trust in you. For all the meek and humble souls, especially little children, protect them and safeguard their innocence. May their lives be an inspiration for us all. We pray to the Lord, Jesus, I trust in you. For baby Isaiah, who has become a new creation in Christ through baptism, grant to him your complete healing and lead him, his parents and siblings, in your ways. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, I trust in you. For all who especially venerate and glorify Jesus' mercy, may they experience the peace of that trust in this life and the delights of God's presence in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Jesus, I trust in you. We pray for healing for all of the sick, especially Vincenta, Manuela, and Maria Elena Isikerdo, baby Isaiah, Cynthia Singh, Cornelia Julian, Mary Kavanaugh, Susan DePaul, Eric Augustus, Georgina Amencia, Carol Kozoli Zamuda, Botole Vertel, Patrick Ikemi, Horace Victor. We pray to the Lord. 
Jesus, I trust in you. We pray for the repose of the souls of Carlos Arnaldo, Patrick Mochia, Ethel Butler, Isaiah Constance, Priscilla Gami, Selena Okafor, Sister Mary Grace Cozzoli, and Mercy Emacheta, and all the faithful departed. Let us pray to the Lord. Jesus, I trust in you. We pray for the intentions we hold in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Jesus, I trust in you. Lord God, you give us this gift of this sacred image. We ask your blessing upon these images, these divine mercy pictures. Lord, bless them. May all who look upon them in their homes and the other places in which they are um, lifted up and, and uh, portrayed, may they draw close to you, placing their trust in you and finding deeply the fountain of your mercy uh, for them to, to enjoy and to live in that full freedom as your sons and daughters and to grow in holiness each day as they proclaim those simple words uh, from the depths of their heart, Jesus, I trust in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So brothers and sisters, at this time, we want to ask the, the lit, ask the saints to intercede for us. We have, in a particular way, we are part of a big family, you know. And though, even, even though Asai is part of a big family, thank God for some of them here. That's nothing compared to the heavenly witnesses who are with us here. And they are all of our deceased loved ones who intercede for us and we intercede for them. But also there's the saints in glory who, who live these heroic lives. And we want to ask them to be with us. We want to explicitly invite them to come to this celebration. And so to each of these, I ask you to respond. Pray for us and we will sing this. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint Faustina, pray for us. Saint John Paul II, pray for us. Saint Maximilian Kolbe. Saint Therese, Saint Antoninus, Saint Michael, and all you holy men and women in glory, Almighty and ever living God, you sent your only Son into the world to cast out the power of Satan, the spirit of evil. In fact, I invite you to come forward at this, at this time, parents and godparents, to renew man and to rescue us from the kingdom of darkness and bring us into the splendor of your kingdom of light. We pray for this child. Set him free from original sin. Make him a temple of your glory and send your Holy Spirit to dwell within him. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
We anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. May, may he strengthen you with his power who lives and reigns forever and ever. Father, you give us grace through sacramental signs which tell us of the wonders of your unseen power. In baptism, we use your gift of water which you have made a rich symbol of the grace you give us in this sacrament. At the very dawn of creation, your spirit breathed on the waters, making them the wellspring of all holiness. The waters of the great flood, you made a, a sign of the waters of baptism that made an end of sin and a new beginning of goodness. Through the waters of the Red Sea, you led Israel out of slavery to be an image of God's holy people set free from sin by baptism. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. Your son willed that water and blood should flow from his side as he hung upon his cross. After his resurrection, he told his disciples, go out and and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Father, look now with love upon your church. Unseal for her the fo fountain of baptism. By the power of the Spirit, give to the water of this font the grace of your Son. You created man in your own likeness. Cleanse him from sin in a new birth to innocence by water and the Holy Spirit. We ask you, Father, with your Son, to send the Holy Spirit upon the water of this font. May all who are buried with Christ in the death of baptism rise also with him to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so at this time, we have a, 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 a occasion, and I'm going to invite everyone to stand and to really support them in this because the renewal of their baptismal promises I'm going to ask all of you to, to be with them, to strengthen them in their response. Now that means you're going to have to say it pretty loud for them to hear you because they won't hear you because you're going to be competing with all of them. So I'll give you a little help with the mic, but, but uh, you make that effort. And the response, of course, is I do. Now the first thing we have to do is we have to make room for God. And that means we have to do, we have to, don't worry about it, he's fine. He's fine. He's, he's just praising God, you know, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, he's spontaneously praising God, that's okay. Well, first thing we have to do is we have to make room for God, that is, we have to cast out from our midst that which is a, an obstacle to him, and I want to suggest that in a particular way, fear is something we have to cast out. We have to say, fear, you are not welcome in my heart. You are not welcome here. And so I, I kick you out. Be gone. Um, and because and, the enemy works through that fear and that anxiety, and he wants to rob us of the, of the joy that God desires for us. But there's also we have to kick out sin. We have to kick out the lack of trust, all the anger, the unforgiveness, all of those things. We have to kick the devil himself out. And then we are free to welcome God in. And the Lord wants you to experience that renewal as we prepare for your son's baptism. So dear parents and godparents, you have come here to present this child for baptism by water and the Holy Spirit. He is to receive the gift of new life from God who is love. On your part, you must make it your constant care to bring him up in the practice of the faith. See that the divine life which God gave him, gives him, is kept safe from the poison of sin, to grow always stronger in his heart. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, renew now the vows of your own baptism, reject sin, profess your faith in Christ Jesus. This is the faith of the church. This is the faith in which this child is about to be baptized. And so I ask you, 
Do you reject Satan? I do. And I'm going to ask you to say it with all your heart, okay? And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Is it your will that Messiah Jovi should be baptized in the faith of the church which we have all professed with you? I do. Yes. yes. Messiah Jovi, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has freed you from sin and given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and welcomed you into his holy people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king. So may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. You have become a new creation and to clothe yourself in Christ. See in this white garment an outward sign of your Christian dignity with your family and friends to help you by word and example. Bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. Receive the light of Christ. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. This child of yours has been enlightened by Christ. He is to walk always as a child of the light. May he keep the flame of faith alive in his heart. When the Lord comes, may he go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. The 
The Lord, the Lord Jesus made the deaf hear and the dumb speak. May he soon touch your ears to receive his word and your mouth to proclaim his praise to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. You have put on Christ. In him you have been baptized. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. And at this time, I want to ask you to pray with me, brothers and sisters, for Isaiah, um, because he's going to have surgery this coming week. And we just want to ask the Lord for healing. Um, God is a miracle-working God. And so we just want to ask, so I just invite you to extend your hand as we pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you for the precious gift of Isaiah's life. We thank you, Lord, and we pray that you might continue to strengthen him, that he might continue to develop and grow, Lord, as you desire, Lord. We pray and speak your, your healing graces upon him, Lord God. This is not a problem for you. You are able to handle this. You are the divine physician, O oh Lord God. May you pour out your grace upon him. Jesus, Jesus, may you go right to the place of where those surgeons are going to work. And, and just make it smooth. Make Thank it smooth, oh Lord God. And, and even if you so desire to let him go to that time of the surgery and they do that final sonogram or whatever they do to see where things are and they say, oh my, he doesn't need surgery. This just went away. Lord, you can do that. We ask you, you, you there's no limit to your mercy. There's no limit to your generosity, Lord God. Jesus, he is yours. He has just been dedicated, consecrated to you in baptism. Lord, he is your son. He is your son. You take care of your son. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood shed for him. Bless him in every way. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. and sisters, I'm going to invite uh, two brother priests to uh, bring, to give you Respurgis, I invite you, uh, my altar service to come around as the, alt as the music ministry leads us in song, and uh, because you have renewed your baptismal promises, and the Lord wants you to uh, taste the sweetness of that in the Asperges. And of course, when you get sprinkled, just make the sign of the cross. God bless you. see images out to you. So we need a couple of people to do that. Thank you. Well
ask the Lord's blessing upon your offering. May the Lord make it fruitful in your lives and in this church. And uh, again, do take a Divine Mercy image on your way out, I mean your way passing uh, after making the offertory. Um, in the initial interview, uh, one per person, and afterwards you can take a second one if there are more left over, if you want to bring one to someone else. Thank you. Yeah.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and those you have brought to new birth in baptism, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world, by dying he destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are there to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, 
John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of your service and that of your whole family, which we make to you. Also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation 
at the altar. Receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, and may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have come before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who do sin us, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some cheer and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with the John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcinus Peter, Felicity Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all the saints, admit us, we beseech you into their campaign, not wearing our merits, but granting us a pardon to Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, in song let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity 
in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the one who, who bled for us, the one who gave everything, every last drop of blood for our redemption, for our salvation, for our peace, here and eternally. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
those who are not able to receive at this time, the Lord invites you to a spiritual communion. And you may do that in your seed in prayer, but either way, pray in your heart this prayer with me. Just logistically, just go to the back if you are receiving. Um, but the prayer I give you is a spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. When you come forward, I invite you just to just pull your mask down right before you come up, so that way you don't have to fiddle with it at the moment of receiving communion.
brothers and sisters, <clears throat> you just take these couple moments, communion, just sit quiet with the Lord and let him speak to your heart. Remember that he does in the silence more than all we can ever imagine. Jesus, I trust in you. Lord Jesus, whatever it is that would cause us anxiety, fear, trepidation, would disturb us, Lord, we place that at your feet. Jesus. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and our hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. No need to sit down because, we believe it or not, we don't have much of announcements. Um, we do not have the procession today, as you can tell, of course, because of the rain. But we postponed it for two weeks from today. So, and the, and the barbecue as well. We won't have a procession two weeks from today, but we'll have the barbecue. So we encourage you to bring what you're able. Um, any side dishes to enjoy with everybody and, uh, and uh, refreshments and desserts. And uh, there is a charismatic conference that's going on, New Jersey Charismatic Conference in May. We'll give you more information about that. It's Pentecost weekend. Praise God and congratulations uh, to our new member of the church. Welcome, blessings to you. And blessings to your family and extended family. The Lord, take care of you in every way. And uh, Jesus, I trust in you. We'll get you through everything. So continue to pray that prayer. And uh, good to be together again in this Easter time. And let the, may the Lord extend that blessing uh, wherever you may go. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the Lord's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen.
And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. And now that the days of our Lord's passion have drawn to a close and we have begun the glorious celebrations of the Easter days, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world. Ruin of souls, amen. A prayer to St. Joseph. To you, blessed, O blessed Joseph, do we come in our tribulation, and having implored the help of your most holy spouse, we confidently invoke your patronage also. We humbly beg you graciously to regard the inheritance which Jesus Christ purchased for us by his blood, and with your power and strength to aid us in our necessities. O most watchful guardian of the Holy Family, defend the chosen children of Jesus Christ. O most loving Father, ward off from us every contagion of error and corrupting influence. Our most mighty protector, be kind to us, and from heaven assist us in our struggle against the powers of darkness. As once you rescued the child Jesus from deadly peril, so now protect God's holy church from the snares of the enemy and from all adversity. Guide and protect all marriages and families. Shield, too, each one of us by your constant protection, so that supported by your example and your aid, each of us may live a holy life and die a holy death, so as to enjoy eternal happiness in heaven. Amen. Praise God.